Villeneuve is a brilliant filmmaker. Every film he makes gets better somehow, and Dune Part Two, in my opinion, is his best yet, and easily one of the most jaw-dropping sci-fi films I have ever seen. So if you haven't seen it, do it immediately. The entire film is wall-to-wall -wall gorgeous with incredible visuals, including the one that we're recreating today, this one. He who can destroy a thing has the real control of it. And here's ours. This tutorial is a beefy boy, so let's jump right in. First thing we needed was our costume. To get something solid would have cost us hundreds of dollars, so instead we made our own. To make the filt plug, this cute little nosy thingy, we got this 25-foot nasal cannula off of Amazon for six bucks, cut it to length, and then we ran craft wire through it to keep it from sagging and to lock it in the place that we wanted. Then we just painted it black with this chalk paint, and bam, what a cutie. Then with our chest piece, which obviously looks janky as f but we knew we weren't going to be seeing much of the front side, so we didn't stress too much on that. But we got this padded shirt off of Amazon for about 30 bucks and used the excess tubing from the cannula to wrap around this piece here to make it look a little less terrible. Then we had these suspenders lying around, so we glued more of the tubing across that and layered that over the chest piece. Then for the cape hoodie piece, we have this black hood scarf that we cut up so that when we blew it with the fan, it would match the look of the movie. Then we put Justin in front of a green screen, turned the fan on and got our shot. Now moving into post, the first thing we're going to do is build out our landscape. And we looked for some stock and found this image from pexels.com with similar elements. We're going to alter this a lot in Photoshop though, using generative fill. So we'll select this person, hit generate and get this weird little guy or these tiny humans and we'll keep generating until we find a version we like. Next, we'll remove their shadow, then this section on the ground since it lessens the sense of scale and distance, and then these mountains and clouds. For the distant mountains, we went through several until we were happy. Then these tracks in the ground are distracting, so we'll select and remove those. And lastly, we'll adjust the shape of the foreground rock until we have this. Now we'll drop our image into our new 4K comp inside of After Effects, changing scale and reframing slightly, using a hue and saturation effect, we're going to go to the reds and expand the selection, shifting the hue, saturation, and brightness, then do the same for the blues until we get a more muted version of the image. Using feathered masks and curve effects, we're going to alter sections of the background, warming up the mountains and lowering the contrast of the ground here. Then with another curves on the whole image, we'll lower the brightness slightly. Now duplicate the layer a couple of times, one for this rock section at the right and another for the foreground rock rotoing each of them before hiding the layers for now. On an adjustment layer, we'll draw a mask for the sky and tops of the mountains, increasing the feather and using a fast box blur with boosted radius, a curves to lower the highlights and lift the shadows, and another curves to make it warmer. Then lower the layer opacity to give us a bit of a haze look. For such a huge explosion like this, we thought it would be best to build it up with multiple different stock assets and slow them down to fake the large sense of scale. And pretty much all of this stock that we're using is gonna be from actionvfx.com. And if we lower the exposure of the original image, we can see there are multiple elements at play. Darker smoke bursts in the background, pieces of debris, bright smoke trails, a few fiery explosions, and an expanding shock wave, a broader wave, and a dust wave lifting from the ground, which is the aspect we are gonna start with. Action VFX has these great dust wave simulation renders separated into different passes of the front, back, and ground shadow. So we'll download and drop the front and shadow assets at the the top of our comp, then move it in the timeline so it started before the shot begins. Then hide the shadow for now and link it to the front layer. Then change the scale and reposition for where we want the base of the explosion to be. With the tritone effect, we're going to select different colors of our environment for the highlights, midtones, and shadows. To help blend the base of it with our brighter sand, we'll use a curves effect to lift the brightness and a vector blur set to directional center with the property as alpha and boosted map softness and amount. Now draw a mask around the bottom section, increase the feather, and in both the curves and vector blur effect dropdowns, we'll set them to use the mask, meaning they will only affect the bottom area. Then make the shadow layer visible and use a tritone effect again. 
It still looks kind of harsh here, so we'll draw a mask and boost the feather. With a fast box blur, we'll increase the amount and use the mask to isolate the blur to this area. We did the same with a curves effect, lowering the outfit channel to decrease the opacity in the mask. Next, we'll build up some darker smoke blasts placed between the dust wave and the shadow, first using Dust Explosion 10, changing the speed to something a lot slower, and enabling frame blending. Changing scale, rotation, and position, we'll line it up to emit from the center and move in the timeline to find a starting point we like. We'll mask out the ground with a slight feather, and using a few curves plus a tint effect, we'll alter the color, but not as much as the foreground dust wave. Since we will eventually have fiery explosions on top of all these other blast layers, we will have some darker elements for variety and to balance out the highlights in the end. Next, we did the same process for Dust Explosion 8 to the right side to get this. With Dust Explosion 2, we'll do mostly the same again, but this time make it orange using a curves effect. It looks completely off at the moment, but again, this is all about building up layers. With the Asset Fiery Dust Explosion 2, we really slowed this down. We found a speed of about 2,000 worked nicely, and with it scaled, repositioned, and shifted in the timeline, we'll move the anchor point to ground level and keyframe the scale to make that motion more consistent for the size of our explosion. Again, masking and feathering to remove the original ground. With a hue and saturation in the yellow channel, we'll expand the selection, shift the hue, and lower both saturation and lightness before using a curves to adjust further. There's plenty more to do, but let's pause to thank our sponsor. Oh, and this is the wild tea buckle, the address of Top Mountain Kilimanjaro for at least 48 hours, correct? Oui, monsieur. Oh, Bartholomew, you spoil me. Well, there you are. You are unfashionably late, but we will not dwell on the happenings of peasants. <laughs> oh, cheeky. Let me ask you a query. Do you ever feel like wasted potential? I'll answer for you. Yes, you are. Now look at me. A beacon of excellence. How, you ask? Well, it's because I switched to music bed. A true inspiration of artistic virtuosity. <laughs> Example. This is Gary. I am better than Gary. He doesn't use music bed, so he will go nowhere in life. He's reached his maximum potential, which is nothing. My name's not Gary. And that was mean for no reason. Do you want to be like Gary? No. You want to be like me. Distinguished. Elegant. Excellent. <laughs> First thing to know is they have the most grand roster of independent artists with over 50,000 songs that you will not find anywhere else. They're also the most curated because Musicbed handpicks every artist in its exclusive roster, which are all curated for your film, TV, and advertising projects. And I have never used the same song twice, not unless I wanted to, of course, because they demand excellence, as do I. <laughs> So, take your films and projects to the highest of heights by switching to music bed. And remember, don't be a Gary, useless and sad. Stop. Instead, sign up for a free 14-day trial found in the description below. And then, and only then, you will be my star pupil of absolute excellence. <laughs> Imagine it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Jumping right back in, to make some of the smoke trails more dimensional, we can use a CC light sweep, altering the settings to get a subtle edge highlight on these sections from the direction of the sunlight. Then add a few more dust explosion elements as well. Next, we'll add some debris with Dirt Blast 2, slow it down and enable frame blending, then move scale and rotate plus shift in the timeline. Now roto out the ground and use a tritone effect to blend. We did the same thing with Dirt Blast 7, 11, and 13, though this time added a vector blur with a low negative amount to slightly thicken the tiny debris particles, making them more visible. One of the elements you sometimes see with very large scale explosions are all these thin smoke trails. We found Dust Explosion 3, Explosion Top 3, and Dust Explosion 11. With sections of the stock, we can slow down, mask out, set some to screen, and use the mesh warp effect to curve them in an outward direction. The original has a lot more of these trails though, so we will create a new comp, make it 2000 by 2000 pixels, and create a new solid layer. Using Red Giant's trap code particular, we can jump into the designer and choose from a selection 
collection of presets available. In the basics tab, there is this explosion trail, which is exactly what we want as a starting point to make it closer to the reference. First in the primary system, we'll alter a number of settings such as velocity, life, particle size and random, color, gravity, and field. Then in system two, we'll go through similar settings again to affect the actual trails leading off from the parent particle before going back to the primary system and increasing the particle count to a high number and changing the random seed to get a pattern we like. To slow the speed, we're gonna exit the designer and jump to the global controls, change the physics time factor to a lower value and pre-run to five seconds so that the explosion starts before the shot begins, giving us this. We'll drop this into our main comp, scale, reposition, and roto the top half with a feathered mask. For color, we'll use a tint set to a slightly warm tone, a CC light sweep to add pops of highlights to the trails in different areas, and a curves to push the warm colors further and darken down the overall brightness. Then we'll move this layer and the dirt blast to beneath fiery dust explosion to to create more depth. In the original, they have this warm shockwave expanding outwards. We can quickly achieve this using mass sections of dust from Dust Explosion 4 and 5 placed on the sides and setting one to screen. Then keyframe the scale for them to expand at a decent speed from the center of the explosion like this. This will end up just being used for highlights and displacement, so we'll use curves on both to crush the contrast and on one, boost the alpha channel to see more of the side detail. For an extra layer of energy in the shockwave, we're going to use our energy ring shockwave from our shockwaves and infinity packs from tryingdigital.com. We'll set it to screen, slow it down, mask it to keep the top half and move it in the timeline to line it up and keyframe the scale to time correctly with the other layers. Using a liquify effect, we'll warp different sections to make it more uniform and circular before adding a curves to increase the contrast. Select these three layers and pre-compose a shockwave, then set the blending mode to add. Use a tint to remove any color then with Video Copilot's Color Vibrance, we'll make it orange and change some of the settings. Then use a vector blur with boosted amount to pinch the highlights slightly and a fast box blur with low amount to soften it. For some displacement, we'll create an adjustment layer and use Red Giant's chromatic displacement effect, selecting the shockwave pre-comp, boosting the soften and displacement amount, plus lowering the displaced spread, then move this beneath a few layers to add depth. In the original, the main fireball looks like multiple explosions, so we'll use two different gas explosion assets, again from Action VFX, slowed down, set to screen, moved in the timeline, masked away any unneeded areas, and using curves to add some brightness and contrast. In the original, the exposure is very high, so we'll duplicate both of these explosions and use a feathered mass set to intersect to retain bright sections within the bulk of the explosions, boosting the curve's brightness and using a tint effect to fix the luminance. We'll pre-compose these together as explosion fire, add a tint effect to remove color and again color vibrance to add a warm tone. Then with Red Giant's Optical Glow, we'll change some settings and add a warm color to the colorize. To place this behind the dust wave, but have the glow wrap in front, we'll first duplicate the dust wave, then pre-compose one of them. On the explosion fire, add a set matte effect and choose the dust wave pre-comp layer. Invert the map and move it above the glow effect. With the dust wave duplicate, set the blending mode to add, delete the old effects and mask, using a new one to keep just the top section of the dust. Then add a curves, lowering the shadows to isolate the highlights, and another curves to add warmth. This acts as highlights from the explosion, casting light onto the dust wave. The next element to replicate is this large structure and chrome ball spaceship thingy. We did originally try to add the building back when using generative fill with no luck, so instead we use this free stock image of a natural rock slash mountain structure beneath the explosion fire layer, just rotoing and coloring to our scene. For the spaceship, we'll duplicate the background and sky layers, then pre-compose together as spaceship. Move this up to above the structure layer and apply a CC sphere effect. This isn't an accurate way to really do this effect, but it does get us most of the way there quickly. And changing these values gives us that clean reflective look. And we can move the sunlight reflection to match the light direction of the scene. This foreground rock kind of acts like a reflection of the structure beneath. We'll add a light sweep to the left side for a highlight from the explosion and use a curves intent to color correct slightly. 
Inside this pre-comp, we'll add a new adjustment layer and apply a mirror effect, moving over to have it flipped from the center, then use a couple feathered masks to the right side of the frame. This helps blend the seam we were getting before. A simple choker effect with boosted value just tidies up the edges, and a fast box blur softens it. The original has this line, so in the pre-comp, we can use a new adjustment layer with curves effect to darken and draw a rectangle mask to make this shape. On the explosion fire layer, we'll duplicate the set mat and change it to use the spaceship layer and choose to use effects and masks. We copied over one of the explosion fires to the spaceship pre-comp placed to the left of frame to act as if it was a reflection. Now we'll make both the rock layers visible and bring them to the top of the comp. We'll slightly darken the one on the right and add a camera lens blur with a low amount. When you do this, you can get ghosting with the unblurred version beneath, so move it up and over slightly to hide that. With the rock front layer, we'll grade it darker. In the original, you can tell that the actor and the rock are in the shade, so we'll try to match that. The same goes for their level of blur, again moving the rock to not see the clear background version. Now we'll drop in the shot of Justin, roto, scale, reposition, key, and grade him down to almost a silhouette, just like the original. And on the rock, we're going to draw some feathered masks and use a darkened curves within these to act as a shadow. Pre-comp Justin and again duplicate the set matte effect on the explosion layer, choosing Justin and then moving the layer to the top of the comp. The glow is too strong in front of him, so we'll duplicate his set matte and place after the glow, then lower the effect opacity to about half. A quick thing we did to add motion to the midground was to use some action VFX smoke stock, rotate to the side, slowed down and colored to match, giving us this faintly visible sand blowing in the wind. The original has a strong vignette, so we added this at the top of the comp with an adjustment layer and darkened curves, then a subtle heat effect to add some warp to the frame, a faint camera shake, a layer of glow, and a final grade and film grain giving us this. A dope ass shot created by our insanely talented VFX artist, Ryan Thompson. If you don't follow him, we are putting all of his socials in the description below. Make sure to give him some love, but that is it for today. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you're notified when we put up more content. And if you try this effect out, make sure you send it over to us. We would love to see what you could pull off. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.